Whether you're new to electric scooters and looking to get your first helmet, or a long-time rider looking for some cool new gear upgrades, we've got you covered. No one rides, tests, or reviews more electric scooters than us here at Rider Guide, so we know a thing or two about what gear to get and about useful accessories for riding. We're gonna go over all the stuff that we actually use every single day. Electric scooter accessories don't really have a whole lot of dedicated brands, so it can be confusing for a new rider to know which direction to go when it comes to choosing a helmet, riding protection, and everything else. So Paul, and I will go over our current arsenal of gear and talk through the benefits of each piece of gear compared to other options. We each got into electric scooters in a different way and came from different backgrounds. I've been a mountain biker my whole life. And before I was at ESG and Lime, I was a motorcycle shop owner and former motorcycle road racing champion. Our gear choices reflect our riding backgrounds and what we are the most comfortable with. But what we've learned is that there's a pretty wide range of gear from a lot of hobbies that can be just as usable for riding electric scooters. Let's jump in. So we're gonna start with our choice for full face helmet. My choice for full face helmet is the Troy Lee D3 fiber light full face full face helmet is necessary for any speeds over about 20 miles an hour i crashed with a full face at about 25 miles an hour and it saved my face and my chin from serious injury so a chin guard is essential no matter what helmet you pick troy lee makes some of the best looking mountain bike helmets on the market in my opinion and mountain bike helmets offer impressive protection at the lightest weights possible. You'll notice this is a trend with most of the gear that I choose, is that I really like having lightweight gear that doesn't weigh me down a lot. I actually feel safer when I don't have a ton of gear that restricts me and makes me heavier on the scooter. It's important that the type of helmet you have matches the type of riding you'll be doing. For example, if you're gonna be riding at motorcycle speeds, it's best to wear a motorcycle helmet because they're designed to absorb impacts at much higher speed and resist abrasion. But not all motorcycle helmets are created equally. So be sure to check your helmet certification. In the US, what you want is something that says it's DOT certified, and then also at least one of the following, ECE, FIM, Sharp, Snell, or FMVSS. DOT is sort of self-certified, just means they followed certain rules, but those other ones, that means they sent it out for outside testing, and so it really passed some kind of test, and that's what you want. So increased protection and testing comes with an increase in price, though, but you can pick up a certified motorcycle helmet for around $200, and then at the extreme high end is my Arai Corsair X, which retails for just under $1,000. This type of helmet is what I wore when I used to race, and it's now what I wear for my daily motorcycle commute, and it's also the main helmet I use when I'm testing scooters for our channel. One caveat, motorcycle helmets tend to be heavier than mountain bike helmets, and you can see the impact of that here. But you do get the benefit of a face shield, which protects you from the wind, and more importantly, protects your eyes from debris. And in fact, it's a legal requirement when you're on a motorcycle in California to protect your eyes. And I should mention at this point that both of these helmets are helmets that Mitchell and I actually bought with our own money, non-sponsored, non-discounted really, just whatever prices we could find on the internet. And that's gonna be true for all the gear we show you. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is half helmets. And you really should only be wearing a half helmet if you're going 15 miles an hour, maybe up to 20, but you don't have that chin protection, so it's advisable that you wear a full face as often as you can. So my choice for half helmet is the Triple Eight Sweat Saver. This is a great balance of price to quality. I think it's $70, and you can usually find it on sale on Amazon. This is really well known in the skateboarding scene. This is actually Tony Hawk's helmet of choice. So for me, that was a good enough endorsement and why I purchased it. And then Paul was talking about having a visor on his helmet, and I fully agree that you need eye protection. And so with my full face, I wear a pair of goggles. These are the 100% Racecraft 2. 100% has been my go-to brand for a long time. They have so many high quality goggles at low prices. In fact, the pair that I had prior to this, I think I paid less than $20 for, and they work just as well as these more expensive goggles that I purchased afterwards. Really the only difference between the cheaper models and this one is 
aesthetics. I thought these looked really cool. I really like the colorway, so I got a pair of more expensive ones. They don't fog up at all. They specifically have vents to prevent that, and they're extremely comfortable to wear for long periods of time. So here is another extreme example of protective gear that I use during 60 mile per hour plus top speed runs on electric scooters, and it's my Aerostitch riding suit. I originally bought these for freeway commuting on the motorcycle because they're protective, somewhat rain resistant, and are super easy to put on over your regular clothes. I know these work because I've crashed this actual suit at 60 miles per hour and then got up and got back on the motorcycle and continued my commute. Now these aren't cheap. They go for about $1,500 and I've got three of them. And even when I owned a motorcycle shop, I paid full retail for them because they only sell direct and don't even have any discounts for influencers. I don't recommend that anybody do 60 mile per hour top speed runs on electric scooters and I don't expect that many people will want to drop $1,500 on a suit. But if you are going to do high speed riding on an electric scooter, there is no better protection when you factor in price, safety, and the practicality of being able to wear it over your regular clothes, which is not something you can really do with racing leathers. The Fox Rangers are my choice of gloves for riding, and they're more for grip and comfort rather than protection. There is a little bit of padding and road rash protection if you do fall, but they are mostly just for the grip and to prevent sweaty palms. The best use I found for them is with the, actually the InMotion RS, it has a bit of a slick twist throttle, and these gloves were amazing for the long rides to make sure that my hand didn't slip on the throttle. Once again, I'm gonna pull out an extreme example here. These are held Phantom 2 gloves that retail for about $380, but sometimes are on sale for less than 250. After I broke my wrist crashing a Cabo Wolf King GT riding one-handed, I bought these myself on my own money because I decided I wanted to buy the best gloves I could find. I always wore held gloves back when I was racing and these are the top of the line from held. They have titanium, Kevlar, Nomex, cow leather, kangaroo leather, and they even have stingray leather, like from a real stingray here on the palm. That's actually the most important part because when I broke my wrist, I fell and planted my wrist and the traction from the palm of my leather gloves broke my wrist. This pair is designed to slide and not grip the pavement too hard. I crash tested these just last weekend with an electric scooter, as you can see here, and both my wrists are still working perfectly. I also tested my other held gloves at speeds at above 60 miles per hour and they never failed. If you're gonna do high speed riding, gloves are a must and held gloves, maybe some of the more affordable models are a splurge I highly recommend. My shoes of choice are the 510 Freeriders. Again, it's a mountain biking shoe and it's designed for mountain biking, but it's great for riding electric scooters because they have great grip and they are flat and rigid. A 510 is a brand by Adidas, so they're super high quality, super nice, highly recommend. These Loa Zephyr waterproof boots are the boots I use for all my testing and commuting. They aren't particularly crash resistant, but they are incredible for water resistance, which is why I bought them for my rain or shine motorcycle commute. For high speed riding, really any leather boots that cover your ankle are gonna help keep you safe from scraping the pointy part on the side of your ankle in a crash and have the side benefit that they also protect protect you from banging your ankles when you're just pushing the scooter around. This particular pair I really like because I can walk in them all day and in the case of the Dualtron X Limited, do a four hour range test without stopping. As you can see, there's a lot of flexibility when approaching scooter gear. You can go with my approach, which focuses on lightweight gear, maximizing comfort while keeping you safe from serious accidents on the majority of scooters. Or you can go Paul's direction, which maximizes safety for those wanting to ride at high speed and really take the dress for the slide, not the ride approach. Or you can go somewhere in between, balancing safety and comfort in a way that makes it fun to ride while minimizing injury. We're going to start testing as much gear as we can get our hands on so that we can give you guys the best recommendations. If there's any brands you want to see us try and test, then be sure to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, stay frosty, and we'll see you in the next one.